Hi, this is Dr. Richika. So let's talk about the causes for IVF failure. So it's a very burning topic because when the IVF fails and as uh, you know, the IVF doesn't have 100% success rate. So obviously anybody who's going for the IVF cycle will land in a failed IVF. So in that case is like, you must be like very much like many questions must be coming up to your mind that why my IVF cycle failed, why I am the only person whose IVF has failed because maybe in your batch maybe three four people must have got the embryo transfer done on the same day and you must be the only culprit whose IVF must have failed. So first and foremost don't put yourself under blame. So just don't be guilty, don't make the wife guilty or don't make the husband guilty whosoever sperm count or the egg quality is low or the uterus problem. So first and foremost stop the blame game. You need to just check on few points. First and foremost, what was the condition of the, like the infrastructure where you got the cycle done? The finacy of the doctor, the embryologist who did the procedure. And then secondly, you need to focus on your quality, your quality of your gametes. Because since you are already having infertility, so there must be problem with the gametes. There must be some problem with it. So we must be very much vigilant to check the problems underlying the eggs and the sperm. And then you should check that what you can do for these improving this quality of eggs, improving this quality of sperms or these qualities can't be improved because uh, what happens whenever you are getting an IVF cycle that we do first time, a doctor doesn't know that what quality specifically what quality of egg is going to be taken out during the IVF procedure. That happens only when we take out your follicular fluid. The embryologist scans it in the lab and tells us what is the gradation of the eggs, how what was the quality of the egg that was taken out. This cannot be predicted prior. First and foremost, you have to put it in your mind. Secondly, whether the sperm can fertilize the egg or not, this you cannot say. In all the good labs also, there are cases where no fertilization is there because this is only IVF. Thirdly, if the fertilization is also there, then how many embryos, how many did they progress to making good embryos. So these things you have to keep in mind and you have to be very practical in your approach when you are getting all these results because you have to be very grounded and you, you need to know that okay these are the problems and these are the zones we need to see. Thirdly, in many cases uh, there are fluctuations in the hormone levels. So in those cases we tell the patient not to go for fresh embryo transfers. We do frozen embryo cycles. So if your doctor is telling you don't go for a fresh embryo transfer, please do listen to her or him and go for frozen embryo cycles. So, uh, because in many cases the hormone levels go so high, so in that the fresh cycle there is no implantation in the uterus. So these things you have to check. Thirdly, comes the role of the endometrium. In endometrium what happens, endometrium is the place where the embryos will go and implant and it has to be very receptive. So the doctor can only check the, your endometrial blood flows, your endometrial lining and thickness, but the receptivity it cannot be checked right now also in this era of advancement also, we cannot check whether your endometrium is 100% receptive or not. So what happens when your IVF is failed, we just presume that okay, this is not your implantation window, this is not the receptive window. So when your IVF fails, we need to make more embryos, we try to make in fact more embryos for our patients so that we can try it in the next receptive window or we try it with a different hormonal pattern. So these are some of the causes for your failing of IVF cycle. Thirdly, it is a myth that if you say that the patient has worked after get, doing an embryo transfer, it's a big myth. So it's not essential that she has to take complete bed rest after the embryo transfer. She only, only needs to take the medicines on time. So one cause of having IVF failure is also that patients don't take medications on time. There are many patients who don't take medicines on time. Thirdly, you should not have any infection after the embryo transfer is done. That is very essential. If you are having any infection after the embryo transfer, you develop any kind of urinary tract infection, any viral infection, then also the IVF cycle fails. So these two, three causes which are in the patient's hand need to be done.